Welcome to lesson number six. We're going to be looking at the inverse of a relation today. And uh, we've been looking at functions recently. In a, in a function, we have a, a set of a values, also known as our domain, or our x values. And those are mapped to one y value, the range. And in this case, we're calling it the b value. Now, um, in each of these cases, I have my function, so case one. And then I have the inverse of my function. So the inverse is shown here, it's case one. So if I compare these values here to these values down here, my inverse of my function is, is very similar to my function. The only difference is my A values and my B values are switched. And so when I go from, uh, from my A value of one to two, and then from two to four, three to six, four to eight, then I'm going backwards from two to one, four to two. 6 to 3, and 8 to 4. And uh, same thing over here. I got negative 2 goes to 4, 2 goes to 4, negative 3, and positive 3 goes to 9. And then it's the reverse. It's the inverse for my inverse function. Now, in each of these cases, um, the inverse is sometimes a function, but not always. So if I look at case 1, um, this is still a function because the inverse... So this is a function because the inverse is mapped to only one b value. However, with uh, function two here, my inverse is, is mapped to multiple a values. So four goes to two and two. And actually this should say negative, oh, that is negative, negative two and positive two. And nine goes to negative three and positive three. So this is not a function. So uh, some important notes, the domain of our, of our inverse is going to be the range of the original function, and the range of the inverse is the domain of the original function. So if I were to find the domain and range of this function here, it's just going to be opposite. The domain becomes the range down here, and the range becomes the domain down here. And so sometimes the inverse of a function is or is not a function. So, um, just an example of what, uh, what an inverse operation is. So if you put your socks on and then you put on your shoes, the inverse of this action would be uh, taking off shoes. So undoing the action. So taking off shoes followed by taking off socks. So you, t you can't take your socks off without taking off your shoes. And just a review of on uh, what inverse operations are. So if I'm multiplying by 2, then the inverse would be to divide by 2. So divide by 2. If I were to square something, the inverse would be to square root it. If I were to take the reciprocal, the inverse is, again, taking the reciprocal. And then divide by 3, then add by 1. Well, to, remember, i got to undo this. And so if I'm undoing this action, it's not going to be multiply by 3 and then subtract 1. But we're going to have to subtract 1 and then, so, so subtract 1 and then multiply, multiply by 3. So if I were to multi divide by 2, the inverse is still going to be a function. It's still going to map just to one value on the... Uh, for my range. If I were to square root something, however, because that gives me positive and negative values, this will not be a function. However, taking the reciprocal will, and uh, subtracting one, multiplying by three also will result in a function. Now looking at this arrow diagram, and this is from the previous page, we want to map um, our pairs from A to B. And uh, when we do that, these are called ordered pairs. And so the first one's done for us. So A at 1 maps to 2. Uh, then we would go 2 maps to 4. And then we would say that 3 maps to 6. And 4 maps to 8. Right? 3 to 6, 4 to 8. And we need our squiggly bracket there. These squiggly brackets just show that's a set of numbers. Um, the inverse will look like this, so 2 to 1, and then we would have 4 to 2, 
and then we would have six to three, and then finally we would have eight to four. And again, it's a set of numbers, so squiggly brackets. Um, if you look at the difference here, the coordinates have just switched. So our x and y values have switched places. Um, so when, when I had my original function at one and two, the inverse went to two and one. Now this is still an x value, this is still a y value, but the coordinates have changed places. So two to four, four to two, three to six, six to three, four to eight, and eight to four. Now consider the function defined by the following set of ordered pairs. We want to describe the inverse of this function by a set of ordered pairs. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six different numbers, or six different coordinates here. And I'm going to describe these as a set of ordered pairs. And this is the inverse of the function. So with this first set of numbers, remember the only thing that happens is the 2 goes over here and the 4 goes over here. So this becomes negative 2 and negative 4. So they essentially just switch places. This will become negative 1 and negative 2. Negative 1 and negative 2. Here I would have 0 and negative 1. Here I would have 1 and 0. And then 4 and 2. And then I would finally have 8 and 3. And again, that's a set of numbers. So we want to graph the original function and the inverse function. So graphing the original and the inverse. So um, my original function, I'll just do in pink here. So here's my original function with my pink coordinates. And I've highlighted in pink here. So negative 4, negative 2, I would... I would plot that point here, and then I, then I, pl I uh, plot the rest of the points. Now I'm going to plot um, my inverse function in, not yellow, because that doesn't work. In, so in yellow. So here's my inverse function graphed in yellow. So now what we want to do is draw a line that acts as a mirror between the original function and the inverse. And so between the original function and the inverse, I don't have a ruler handy right now, but my mirror is going to go a little something like this. So something like that. So the equation of my mirror is um, y is equal to x. And so we could, like, it, you know, this is a linear equation. It's a straight line. And um, it's reflect, my, my x values are reflecting the y val in the y axis and my y values are reflecting the x axis. Now to get the equation of this line, remember that it has an intersect of zero. And every time we, so it would be y equals mx plus b. And then every time we, we go up, we go up by one point and we move over by one point up by one point, over by one point, up by one point, over by one point, so my slope is one. And so the equation of this line ends up being y is equal to x. So next I have these, uh, these two different graphs. And uh, you know, if I were to find the inverse of the function, I could determine that by, uh, by simply um, taking the graph and reflecting the y equals x axis, or y equals x line. Um, alternatively though, all I gotta do is select a few points and take those points and then um, graph the inverse of those points. And so here, if, I, if I'm uh, going up by, so this point here, uh, if I start at my origin, it's two, four, six, so this is gonna be at negative six and zero. So if I were to graph the inverse of this point, so um, again, the, the inverse of this point is negative six and zero, then my inverse point is going to be at 0 and negative 6. So 0 and negative 6 would then go here. If I take the inverse of this point, so the, not the pink one, but the point um, before that, then this point is now going to be, since it's, it's currently at 0 and negative 6, it's going to go back up here to negative 6 and 0. This point, and so far, uh, my line is looking, you know, something like, uh, well, like that. <laughs> and then this last point, um, if I take this and graph it, 
So the right now is that six and zero. I'm gonna have to put it to zero and positive six. So one, so two, four, six. So my new line is going to, it's still gonna follow this, but the only thing I'm gonna to have to do is go like so and like so. So if you follow my new graph, all I've done is I've taken this and I've shifted it along, along my, uh, my line at y equals x. And it's, uh, in a similar fashion with this line, with this line here, and it might help if I highlight the original. So I'm gonna highlight the original line. All right, and so then I'll take these points. So again, this is at, um, this is at negative six and zero, so that will go to zero and negative six. So down here. This is at um, zero and two, so this will go down to two and zero. So two and zero is right here. And then this last point is at six and zero, so that's going to go to zero and six, like this. And so this graph is gonna look something like that. Last, we're looking at finding the, the inverse of a function by an equation. So if I have the equation y equals three x plus two, um, I'm looking at this equation in the form y equals mx plus b. So here's my original equation, y equals three x plus two. Two. And uh, if I were to find the inverse, the, what I need to do is I need to switch my x and y values. So the inverse would become x. So this is the inverse here. So x is equal to 3y plus 2. And then I just need to solve this in terms of y. So if I have positive 2 over here, I need to bring it over here, which would become x minus 2 equals 3y. And then if I have 3, 3 times y, I have to divide both sides by three, and this is gonna leave me with x minus two divided by three equals y. And we can also rewrite this as y is equal to one third x minus two, or y equals one third x minus two over three. Uh, we want to graph the original and its function now on the grid provided. So my original function, 3x plus 2, is going to be like this. And then I go up by 3, 1, 2, 3, and over by 2, 1, 2. And so my original graph looks something like, uh, I don't have the ruler on me, but it looks something like this. Uh, however, my, um, I'll draw this one in pink. My new line, y equals one, one third x minus two thirds. So negative two thirds is gonna be not quite at one, but somewhere like that, past 0 0.5. And then I'm going down one and over by, th and then I'm going up one and over by three, sorry. So I would go up one and over by one, two, three, and look something like that, would be my next point. And so if I draw a straight line here, my line looks something like this. Now, if we look at the graph of both of the functions, is the inverse of the function defined by the equation y equal 3x plus 2 also a function? And the answer to this is invariably yes. And the reason is because there's only one range value for the domain, but also it follows the vertical line test. And the vertical line test says that if my function, um, if my function passes uh, my vertical line at two points, and so if I'm looking at this pink line, it only crosses at one each time, then it is a function. If we compare that to up here, neither of these inverse are functions, right? So uh, op option A and option B, these are both not functions because they cross this at two points in multiple places.